What screams, I lost the argument? I have a right to my opinion. Of course you do. And usually at this point in the argument, no one has said otherwise. But that doesn't mean your opinion is supported by evidence. Similarly, people tend to confuse being legally in the clear with being justified more broadly. I remember arguing with a friend that a particular movement was stupid and he replied, well the same right that allows you to criticize them allows them to do it. And it's like, yeah, of course they have the right to do it, but that doesn't make it a smart thing to do. Or when somebody says they have a right to an opinion, but it turns out their opinion is really a fact that is not true. Bringing up old arguments that have nothing to do with the current one, lol. This. I got into a very, very long argument with my boss slash brother before we parted ways. I brought up things from 5 years ago, but all regarding the job and issues that we're building. He brought up some of the same, but also one thing about his wife and I that literally had nothing to do about what was going on. It's when I knew he was grasping at straws, and that I was right at the time. Directing towards some other topic. When someone points out that you ate the last sausage, and they know because there's half a sausage sticking out of your mouth, you've given up the game by saying, Yeah, well what about the time you ate all the corn chips? That's a separate argument, my dude. Whatever, Lameo. I know some people who literally can't be argued with as they just don't have common sense. If it's an argument that just doesn't matter and you don't feel like spending half an hour on the subject, then sure, agree to disagree. You might lose the argument, but that doesn't prove you wrong. And that goes for plenty of other comments here. Make a judgment for every situation. If it's not worth the time or verbal fight, just concede. That's what I usually do. I usually get into online arguments with people in video games where nobody knows what I look like IRL. Usually they'll resort to calling me a kid or a 9 year old or whatever when I disagree with them. For such an unoriginal comeback, they've already lost. So your argument is so terrible, a 9 year old could see what's wrong with it. I'm all for being a better person and seeing the good in people, but if they're unwilling to listen, it's not worth the effort explaining. When they tell you to do your research. Someone said this to my brother recently when he corrected them on some coronavirus stuff. His response was, Well, I'm doing my postdoc in virology. I work in the lab with one of the people on the vaccine approval board, and I've been in this field for over 15 years, so I've done a bit of research. Of course, there was no response to that. Ah, yes. This is my pet peeve. I was talking to a friend a while back, and he was using some pretty extreme appeals to authority. He wanted me to accept everything he was claiming without proof. He said that I should trust him, because he's spent 10 years researching this topic. I said, wow, 10 years of research? That's incredible. Can you send me your notes so I can review your sources? And of course, he had no notes. Wait, you did 10 years of research and you didn't take a single note? He just kept saying, do your own research, etc. Really, what he meant was that he listened to a bunch of hyper-biased news sources for years and never actually researched anything. A refusal to answer direct questions that are clearly designed to demonstrate the flaw in your reasoning. The only reason you have to refuse an answer to a question is if you know the answer is going to lead you to admit that you're wrong, and if you can't admit that you're wrong, then you're no longer interested in meaningful discussion. Do the research. Like, no, you're the one who made the argument. The burden of proof is on you. This tactic is almost always used by people who value their fee-fees over actual data. Anti-vaxxers, flat earthers, People who think getting a raise into another tax bracket would cause them to earn less money, etc. Agreed. I hate the argument style where people don't actually make an assertion, but just talk in vague circles about doing your own research or how stuff doesn't make sense. I have a friend who argues this way. He does shit like sending screen caps of data from the CDC website and saying things like, do you really think that adds up? Hmm? Interesting. Seriously, man, what exactly are you alleging? And what's your evidence? It's impossible to attack an argument that you never actually clearly make. When people start denying a source is valid because it doesn't conform to their worldwide view. Relying on slogans heavily without being able to get into details. You get folks just repeating a talking point over and over and makes for less than convincing arguments. Even if you and a whole bunch of people do it, it backfires with folks being able to see where you and your team's bullshit is and call you out. You lose by empowering your enemies with sloganeering. Personal insults. I don't care how right you are. You're not arguing at that point. You're fighting. There's a fine line there. 
and that's a great way to cross right over. If you can't put across your argument without belittling the other person or resorting to trash talk, there's no point in going any further unless you're ready to cool the hell down from that point. Pointing out small discrepancies in an otherwise factual statement and pretending that invalidates their whole argument. I saw you get in a blue car and drive off with your secret lover when you said you were going for a walk. You're completely wrong. It was a blue SUV and I did go for a walk after. Every time you mention a source, they say that's a lie with nothing to back it up. Also, when they start to back out, but also get the last word by saying, listen, all I'm saying is, usually that's not all you're saying. And it's the equivalent of saying, let's just pretend I won this argument and leave it at that. When my husband sits there with that look on his face, that look that says he is waiting for me to put together some obvious pieces that I missed. I always find those pieces eventually. And then I concede with an air of torture because he's always right, always. As soon as I see that look, I lost. When they start insulting you, or say, and your point? This is more on arguments where I use Filipino language, and they say, So anon pinagla laban mo? When you start dropping facts, it's embarrassing actually. You think you're winning, but in the end you look stupid. When they belittle you by calling you a young age, and basically invalidate your opinions or your part of the argument because they don't like it or don't agree with it. So obviously you're a kid who knows nothing and has no experience for disagreeing with them. Let's agree to disagree on something that isn't subjective. I think this is just an admission that they understand that neither side is convincing the other regardless of how right each side thinks they are and they would rather part ways amicably than be pissed off at each other. It's honestly a reasonable response to an opponent who is so entrenched they won't listen rather than having lost the argument. Otherwise, winning an argument would simply be who can go the longest. Ad hominem. Much has already been said, but directly attacking someone in any fashion instead of remaining on topic is the quickest way to express that not only are you emotionally immature and unable to answer the counter argument, but you'll also go above and beyond to prove your ignorance. When they've been going on for a while making all these claims and then suddenly start saying things like, I don't have the energy to educate you right now. Ah, the old, whoever can endure a painful, stupid conversation the longest is the real winner argument. Needless to say, I very empathetically disagree with you. The validity of an argument isn't decided by whoever happens to be the last man standing. And I don't have any more energy to explain why. Everyone knows that. I'm not doing research for you. I'm not taking this from someone who, insert unrelated mistake, you are a racist slash fascist slash Nazi slash anti-gay slash sexist, drowning opponents with shouting wall of words. Please note, though these tactics are effective, they don't defeat the opponent, but they convince observers and bystanders, and that is probably the same as defeat for most purposes. People do it because it works. Whenever I'm winning an argument, people always pull out the insults. I'm conservative, so as soon as I start winning an argument, they call me a white supremacist, a homophobe, and all the rest of the terrible triggering words nowadays. Uncles. Haha, <laughs> yeah, okay, buddy. You could talk to me when you start paying taxes. 20 years later. I'm 34, and although taxes stink, I support paying them because I like stuff. And I'm not a fucking child who expects things to just magically work. Turns out, boomers just sucked at running Earth. Coming from an Asian family. Shut up and respect your elders. What does a little child know? Watching a specific unnamed country. It's all fake news. You're all terrible people. Proceeds to ramble about nonsense. Refusal to answer a yes or no question. If you have a logical position, you should be able to answer easily and explain why your answer fits with your position. If you can't do it, it means you acknowledge that answering would mean admitting you're wrong. When they have to invoke free speech as a reason to continue saying what they are saying. Just because you are legally permitted to say it does not mean that it's valid, that you deserve a platform, or that we should be forced to listen. The second they start talking about free speech as a reason to continue, it's because they lost. Their only remaining argument is it's not illegal for me to say this. The right to free speech is amazing. It's the cornerstone of any free society. It's not a blank check to force everyone to listen to your shitty views. What aboutism and pointing out pronouns in the bio. People misuse what aboutism. They either hear it said or look it up on Wikipedia or had a college freshman course that mentioned it once. The key component of this and other logical fallacies, like the straw man argument, is deflecting from the original argument by bringing up something else, or to implicate another, usually the other, party. 
by bringing up a similar scenario, but not addressing the merits or demerits of the original claim. It has particular relevancy to political propaganda, but its misuse as a counterattack on Reddit is widespread. If someone actually addressed the merits of the original argument and using analogies or examples to support their point, it's not always whataboutism. Knew someone that would just say the same thing over and over, verbatim. She'd say it, you could provide proof that what she said was wrong or make a direct argument against it, and she'd just repeat it again, verbatim. You'd say, you're just saying that over and over. I've told you why that's not true, but you keep saying it. She'd pause, shake her head, and say it again. And then she'd come out convinced she won the argument because of the things she said. Focusing on a typo or grammatical error made by the other person. I suppose this might be considered a form of ad hominem attack. I do want to say, however, that there are sometimes instances where the winner of an argument is the one who is wrong. This is usually because they are just really good at arguing or they wore the other person down, as opposed to actually being on the correct side. I guess the tactics everyone is listing here figure into that. Some folks know that you can get the other person to give up by insulting them, deflecting, etc. Or just being louder. Failing to address what your counterpart just said. I try to talk with my dad about politics. I'll carefully craft a nice message, making clear points and asking him a specific question about his beliefs, and he'll respond with a link to a Facebook post by a random lady alleging mass voter fraud. I learned from Bill Burr that if the other person misdirects the argument to something that pisses you off, you've won the argument. All you need to do from then on is ignore the insults and keep on the original topic. Correcting grammar. If the best retort you have to my comment is to complain I didn't proofread my swipe keyboard response, just save yourself the trouble of commenting. Nobody likes a pedant. When you're humble enough to re-examine your preconceptions and admit to being wrong. Wisdom, after all, is more than just knowing what you don't know. It's being able to admit something you knew was wrong and then change your worldwide views based on the new information. Demanding sources, but refuting each one as a fake or the much more frustrating route of claiming that because someone swore or called you a name, their argument is invalid. False civility is so obnoxious. Saying things like, not to be a dick, or no offense, but they are pathetic attempts to hide the fact that they are about to make a personal attack, as if it means they can go, but I said no offense. Attacking the person, aka ad hominem. You'd be surprised how many people do this on Reddit, and they think it makes them look strong, but it really just invalidates their argument and shows that they know they've lost. My girlfriend tries to flip the script and suddenly claims she was always on the other side of the argument, and I was in fact the one arguing the now deemed erroneous stance. Then she sticks to that story until I say whatever and stops talking about it. Every once in a while she tries to follow up and keep pressing the issue, but that's usually when I'm totally fed up with it and just walk away. But I know I won the argument, I know she knows too, but she'll just never admit it. Just kidding is when the argument borders on being a joke, but not really. And when losing the argument, they try to brush away the conversation, trying to imply that they were joking to begin with, even though they were clearly not. You know, I think I actually agree with you on this, and all of those little details I was focusing on aren't important to me anymore. I really appreciate your patience with me. I love you a lot, and let's fuck. The truth is somewhere in between. No, diddling kids is wrong, full stop. There is no acceptable amount of diddling kids. Just admit you are wrong and that your last ditch effort to be at least half right is just another trick. Fine, I'll just leave. You think you're always right? I don't believe in your ways. You don't love me. You're just like your father. Men are always right. You're making things up. You're so bipolar. Some quotes from my stepmom. When their argument becomes straw man, i.e. when their counter argument isn't relevant to the original claim and instead attacking an entirely different topic, if your counter argument isn't relevant because of their logical fallacy, then I know I've won. Almost a fucking year into the pandemic, with a mask mandate since late April, and your excuse is that your nose is uncovered because your single-use mask doesn't fit properly, and that I am, quote, very rude for pointing that out, screaming at me in public, yeah mate, I have the upper hand. Honestly, anyone who enters into an argument has already lost. You can discuss things, but an argument implies a level of emotion, and emotional arguments only drive people further apart rather than helping anyone find some good common ground. In Italy, old people that never bothered to have a formal education and that belong to a certain political ideology love to say, the great professor has come, 
When someone points out the batshit insane stuff they come up with. When you call the other person's names or profanity and don't back up your claims. Twitter is an example of this. Person uses logic. Twitter users confuse screaming. In a long car trip with a guy who turned out to be a 911 conspiracy theorist and really, really wanted to talk about it, we go around for a bit, mostly keeping things cool, until I say, I'm just listening to the experts. He turns red and starts yelling, experts? Experts? You want to tell me what an expert is? I say, okay, tell me. Expert is like an ex that has been and a spurt. That's like a little, that's like a little thing. He was pretty quiet for most of the rest of the trip. When people shout, well, it's my opinion and that's yours. I don't care what you say. Or personally in religious debates, when they say all priests are pedos or just insult God, etc. When they try and disprove your point by going, shut up. This happens recently with my mom when she said she never wanted to see me again. And then a week later, she pretended nothing happened. She's an asshole and she somehow wonders why I don't want to live with her. Personal attacks. For example, you're just an uneducated redneck. You'll never amount to much. I'm 27 and paid off my house and the car last year without any assistance from family. Meanwhile, this person was complaining about their 200k student debt and unemployment issues. Just saying, if you attack me as a person, I immediately know there's no value in what you preach. Endlessly shifting the argument to things totally unrelated to the case in point and stretching to incidents from years before. It is the mark of a totally sad sack of shit who is now in the mid 50s and has alienated everyone in their life, friends and family included, and are now drinking themselves to death in and stinking of shite. Sorry, sister. When they start cussing you out and literally calling you retarded, I won an argument completely and this lady I was debating, who is a senior in my high school debate team, was cussing me out calling me a ducking retard because of her autocorrect and etc. Lots. Have people saying changing the topic, which is absolutely invalid, but perhaps the biggest sign of losing the argument is when that topic is physical appearance. You can be arguing about politics, cars, TV shows, whatever, but if you feel like you need to call someone fat or ugly or something, not only have you lost, but you've confirmed that you're kinda a shitty person. Had an acquaintance that I didn't get along with very well. Argued a lot. Hilariously, he would always end the argument by turning to sigh. You just always need to be right, don't you? Even though he had been arguing just as much as me and never once conceded his own position. When they start calling you names or making petty insults or jabs or getting off topic or start threatening you or being very aggressive, basically they stop any form of logical argument or to find a solution to whatever argument slash problem. The instant they bring up other person's physical appearance in any way, I don't care if that motherfucker looks like the Phantom of the Opera if you have to resort to attacking someone's appearance because they've got nothing else, it's an instant L. When you get called a Nazi, line drawn, discussion over, they don't really want to understand. I am referring to not making my children kiss or hug relatives that my children don't want to kiss or hug. I think kids should be allowed to say no to physical affection. I think that is quite the opposite of Nazi ideals. This is just like Auschwitz. Blank is just like a Nazi. Anytime you're comparing something quite banal to something that was responsible for the murders of millions of innocent people, you have lost my respect and the argument by default. When they start screaming at you the exact same thing they said that was irrelevant to begin with, in hopes that their loud voice would change the meaning of their argument and clapping their hands like a gorilla would do, pounding their chest to exert dominance. I usually would go in silence and that would be the end of it. Though sometimes if I lose control a bit and don't catch myself, I'll continue to argue and can usually convince otherwise. I've won lots of arguments I know I shouldn't have. I've gotten better though. Ignoring context. If I broke down your door with an axe in the middle of the night while you're unconscious, dragged you out of your house and threw you in the back of a vehicle, would that be a bad thing? Well, if I'm a firefighter and your home is burning down, you'd probably thank me after you wake up. Too many people are trying to compare things that functionally may look similar, but the context completely changes the understanding of the actions. Loud anger groups of people clashing with law enforcement, causing damage to persons and property. Look at the reasons why the groups are acting and what their desired outcomes would be. Suddenly, things look different, aren't they?